Howdy. Can I start this by saying howdy? I don't know, but I just did. So one of you guys uh, requested that I do a full book review on the book called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. It is um, a New York Times bestseller. this year and it has been one of the most important books that I have read this year now I have avoided making a re full review of this book um like I, I have a review on Goodreads and I avoided making a video review just because I felt like the time span between when I read it and when I was going to do the review was too far apart but I have decided to bite the bullet and just do a review. I'm going to give you my thoughts and feels and um, just little points to think about. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notebook because I, my thoughts were all over this place so I had to write them down to kind of organize them even though I don't think they're going to be organized. I rated this book 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and if I could give this 10 out of 10 stars, I would. I think this book is probably one of the most important books that you could read in our time. It is a very timely book, um, to say the least. It is thought-provoking, it is heart-wrenching, it is relatable, and it's uncomfortable. This, this book, see, like, I can't even speak about this book. Like, I just, like, get, like, tongue-tied because I want to do it justice by s talking about it well, let's start with what it's about. So this book, I could say, is inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. And if that makes you uncomfortable, then, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. But it's about a girl named Star Carter. She's 16 years old. She goes, she lives in a black neighborhood, but she travels, she commutes to a prep school in a white suburban neighborhood. Um, she lives a sheltered life. Her dad and her mom kind of shelter her from her environment that she actually lives in. Um, she's not allowed to go out, really. She goes to school, comes home, works at her dad's store. Um, he has like a, like a grocery store. And she works there and goes home. One night, uh, Star decides to go to her... Now, if you haven't read this and don't want any spoilers whatsoever, I wouldn't watch it. Watch this review um, because I'm gonna have spoilers. Um, if if you don't want any spoilers, don't watch. But she goes. She ends up being allowed to go to this party with her um, half sister. I guess it's her. They share a dad, but different mom. So she goes to this party and she sees an old friend, one of her best friends that she grew up with, his name is Khalil, and they start talking and everything and then there was a shooting at the party. So her sister is off somewhere and she can't find her, but Khalil's like, we need to get out of here. So she leaves with Khalil, she calls her sister in the car and she finds out she's okay. As they're driving, they get pulled over by a police officer. And um, the worst thing happens. Uh, this white police officer um, ends up shooting Khalil and killing him. And he shoots him unjustly. Khalil was unarmed. Um, and the way it happened was so heart-wrenching. Like, I... I just immediately started crying. <laughs> I mean, I cry for a lot of things, but I felt that, you know, like I I just I just started being reminded again of everything that's actually happening in our society at this moment and how there have been so many unjust police cases of police brutality, police killings against black men or and women. Um, just just people of color in general you know and that just spurred a lot of emotions inside of me so I felt frustrated when I read this part I felt angry and I felt sad 
um, immediately. And this is like the first chapter. And to continue on with the rest of the book, I felt these things because you're in Star's shoes and you're witnessing everything from her point of view. And she becomes scared to speak up. Now, in the book, I believe they mentioned that, which, which I thought was a good thing to do, they mentioned that not all police are bad. And I think a lot of people get, um, on both sides, get kind of mixed up with that. Like, when um, some of these things happen, we, we just immediately start saying, oh man, I hate the police, I hate the police. But we need the police. We need the police, they're supposed to keep order. They're supposed to protect us. They're supposed to serve our community. And there are good cops out there. So if you're one of those good cops, then I give you praise for your position. And I thank you for your service. And I know it's a dangerous job. But for the cops out there, for the policemen and women out there that have some type of mental um, prejudice or racist, racism or thoughts of racism, something like that, um, I say maybe you're in the wrong profession because you're going to have to deal with people of all different colors, all different ethnicities, all different kinds of backgrounds. One thing this, this book made me think about was how our police are being trained in the community. Are they trained to just shoot to kill? Are they trained to use a taser? Are they trained to use stun bullets? There's so many ways whenever I see something like, oh, police shot this guy, he died. It, it kind of messes with me because I'm like, why did he have to die? Was there not an alternative to the, to the, to the um, situation, you know? Um, so when I read this book and Khalil died, I said, oh my gosh, here's this young kid who just died at the hands of a policeman um, who had really no reason to pull him over. And it's kind of like, couldn't, couldn't he have done something different? Couldn't he have tased him or use a, use a rubber bullet, something that wasn't deadly? These are all questions that I think anyone would have reading this book and reading and just even witnessing the things that are going on in our society today. I don't have to mention them, but I, I'm pretty sure you know what's going on because I feel like if you didn't know what's going on, this book wouldn't even be a topic of conversation right now. So I appreciated this book because you started to see like what happens after. How did this killing, this I want to call it a murder. <laughs> how did this murder of this kid, how did this shooting of this kid, how did this happen? And how does it affect everything after that? The people um, that knew this, knew Khalil, the people that know the police, his family, the family of Khalil, his friends, um, and everything in between. Like, how, how does one move on from that? Especially a 16-year-old girl you're sitting next to your best friend and he just dies. How, how do you move on from that? You see this aftermath take place. Um, you definitely get to see how the media can misconstrue this truth. You definitely can see a an officer who doesn't think he did anything wrong. You can definitely see just how... how I, I just think it's funny because it's like... The media loves to do this thing where, and we all know this, um, where they look for like the worst in everything. Like, oh, they can't just say like Khalil was just this nice kid. Like, you start to find out Khalil's story and w what he's doing and stuff like that. And you kind of, you know the background, but the media doesn't. So they paint a picture of him, a terrible picture of him. And I think that um, it just makes you think, you know. And um, it makes you kind of want to stand up against it. So I just found this book to be really emotional on, in a wide range of emotions. And I thought it was funny, too, to see that, um, you know how when you're young and your parents give you, like, a talk, like, don't talk to strangers or whatever, whatever. Well, these kids I got to talk, and the talk was how to behave when a police pulls you over 
when a police stops you what to do and it's kind of scary that we have to do that that we have to worry about that like put your hands on the steering wheel don't talk back don't say anything bad to them you know and just hope for the best you know it kind of sucks in this book though you also see um star who has friends that are not all that that are of different races and you also see an interracial couple in this book so it's not just about black only it's about everybody and how everyone kind of gets affected by this and in the aftermath so I don't know if I did a good job of like reviewing this book or talking about it but really I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit about it because honestly I think that everyone should read this book and even if you don't like this type of book or you're not interested in this movement or whatever I really think that it's just a good book to read to kind of just educate um, and to learn about someone else's to put yourself in someone else's shoes and um, and I think that the author Angie Thomas did a great job of just creating a novel that that opened up a lot of discussion and although everyone has their own opinions and everything I think that um, we can all be civil on this matter and just kind of talk about the book. Um, so if you have your, if you've read this book and or you want to read this book, comment below and let me know your thoughts and feels about this book. Um, honestly, I just recommend it to every single person that I come in contact with. I, I tell them, hey, have you read The Hate You Give? I think you should read this book. It is so good. Um, you know, like I really, I really just recommend it to everyone because. It truly is a really good book and it just really makes you think. I love books that make you think and this is one of those books. So um, five out of five stars. I hope this uh, kind of <laughs> gave you a little bit of a review and um, the writing style was great and I love the language um, and the way that it was written. So I appreciate this novel. I appreciate Angie Thomas for writing this novel. And I hope you do too. Um, this is my first official book review. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on how to do these better, um, comment below. Unfortunately, I had to do it in my car. But I kind of like talking to you guys in my car. So if you notice, my vlogs are always in my car. So um, I'll see you guys next time.